Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Adventures, Adventures, Adventures. I can't always say it, Adventures Travel Club television show. And we're going to be back uh, with this adventure on Whitby Island. And there's a picture of what, Betty? Oh, uh, your very, very favorite thing to actually put on film. You don't care about the rest of it as long as you can have the birds. Uh, now, that, that's, that's, that's what they true. say. This show now, is for that, the birds. That's yes, not true. I'm anyway, just saying that. Well, this is a place where we stopped, and uh, this is uh, actually it's a winery and uh, where they have Loganberry wine. And yeah, you can have the Loganberry wine. You don't like it, huh? No. Uh -uh. No. Oh, yeah, I don't tasty. like sweet. Well, uh, you can get Loganberry syrup for your waffles well, or your that's pancakes. that's all right. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, that's, that'd be yeah, nice, that's yeah. that's okay. Anyway, this was a nice little stop uh, on the, uh, the south portion of the island there, and so we enjoyed that. And then we took a look at some of the flora and the fauna. Oh, that sounds so romantic. The flora, the and, the flora fauna. and the fauna. The flora and the fauna. Well, here's some of those. Which came first, the flora, the flora or the fauna. fauna? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> anyway, there's some beautiful. Uh, you beautiful asked me about those. You here. know, I, th those look like hollyhock. It might to have me. been. Might have been. I'm not sure. But these are the loganberries that are out there in the in the loganberry uh, berry patch. Well, that's a good place to find <laughs> loganberries in the loganberry patch. I think so. I'd never seen them grow this way before. Um, I thought that they just grew up beside a creek or something like that. And I guess it's probably what they did before they cultivated you know, all of these what, things. You know, Marv, one thing that really amazed me, it's not right now anyway, but how they grow cranberries. Oh, yeah. I didn't know In the cranberries bogs? were grown. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, the cranberry, cranberry bogs, you know. <laughs> Anyway, hey, we've gone on down now to the town of Langley. And do you know that this town was founded by a teenager? In the 1880s, uh, the South Island, uh, south part of the Whitby Island, uh, there was some of the uh, uh, settlement that was going on there, but it was kind of sparse because they had logging industry there and they were cutting timber to export. Was that the kid that found it? It may or have been. I'm not sure. Do I don't know. But anyway, into that area came a German immigrant teenager by the name of, of Jacob Anthes. And uh, Anthes, I think that's the way he pronounced it. Anyway, he was too young to file for a homestead, so instead he paid $100 for 120 acres of land overlooking the Saratoga Passage. And he supported himself by selling cordwood from his property for fuel to power the many steamships which sailed the islands and the inlets there of Puget Sound. And when he finally turned 21 years of old, his homestead, he homesteaded a parcel of land uh, almost half again as large as the one that he purchased. And by logging the homestead, he was eventually able to earn enough money to interest some partners in forming a corporation uh, to uh, incorporate, you know, the, the town there. And uh, he became the town's first storekeeper and then the postmaster. And he took the leading role in founding a schoolhouse for local children. And he created roads and other settlers then came in either by foot or by, by boat, but right. now they could come in by wagon. <laughs> or they could swim in. Yeah, now yeah, that's pretty good for, for a 16 year old, isn't it? You see, yeah. that's what you call really, really looking forward, entrepreneurship, whatever, to be a 16 year old and do something like that. That's right, and he was a German immigrant. No money, I'm sure. No, well, he probably didn't have very much, no. but uh, had enough to get started by hey, anyway. And then who kept it? Did he uh, did he get to keep possession of it, or did the oh, government sure. come along and take it away from him? No, I they bet they it. did. They wouldn't do anything well, like that. Well, it's not that, called by his name. Uh, no, it was. I, how did it get its name? Let's see. It got its name. Hmm. If, I'm not sure how it got its name. It was named after probably Mr. Langley. Well, I it should have been named after the kid that found Mr. Anthes? Yes. Maybe it was too hard to pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, it's a beautiful it area. It was a cute little town. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. We had lunch there, and I remember we were all just starving, and we were looking for some place to eat. And we found some great We just places. sort of wandered into Langley. We, yeah. we went, it was not on the agenda. And now we're going to wander on down to the town of Clinton so that we can catch the uh, ferry boat and go over to the... Uh, mainland of Washington State and uh, we're going to we're going to take that uh, that ferry boat another ferry boat again this will be the last one that we're going to take on uh, on this trip and so anyway I could make a remark about that town but I won't well <laughs> not during an election <laughs> year not please during an election year no, we don't no, do no. that do we anyway we keep it to so this was th this was uh, uh, it was a pretty little place and of course you can see the mainland just right over there it's just a hop skip and a jump in fact the ferry boat ride was very, very short. 
but it was fun. It was fun. The other thing that I really love about that area up there is the water. I, I was raised in San Francisco, but have been in the San Joaquin Valley most of my life because when I got married, I moved here. But I've always loved the water. Me too. And here I'm yeah. stuck. <laughs> I'm <so> not <laughs> stuck. I mean, it's by choice that I'm here. But there's something that so soothing, therapeutic oh, about yes. the water. Oh, yes, so relaxing. That's and true. so cleansing. <laughs> yeah, that's right, too. <laughs> Bring your own bar of soap. Well, first, uh, the foot passengers, of course, get off of the uh, ferry boat. And then after that, of course, then the, uh, the cars and the buses will be loaded onto it, too. But and as you can see, you know, I, everywhere we went, uh, there were, these ferry boats were filled. Yes. I couldn't believe how many cars and buses and, and, and people who were on foot that were, uh, that were loading up on the, them. On the And this ferry is boats. not because of tourists. This is because it's a necessity, a way of life. Well, I think it, yeah, Some I, were tourists. I think it might be a little bit of both, you know. I think it might be a little bit of both. But I we didn't know. see that many. What? Tour, uh, tour, tour buses. Oh, as far as the buses are concerned? Yeah. No, you're right. No, we didn't. We didn't see that many. No, that, that's very true. Well, it's our turn now to uh, to get on the ferry boat. You did a good job of putting that on there. You drove that very well. Did you like that? Oh, yeah. I was real <laughs> proud of you, Mark. Yeah, sure. It's too bad uh -huh. you didn't have a license. Yeah. Oh, just shh. You're not supposed to tell people that. Okay. Okay. No, I didn't drive the bus. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> She's just joshing, folks. Just joshing. Anyway, we're going to get on this last one. Now, th these are, uh, I I've been on bigger ferry boats. You know, the the, uh, the American ferry boats this last year, in 1995, I think it was, they put some brand new ones on, and they were they were bigger ones. But a few years ago, I had been up there uh, and were on some of the Canadian ferry boats, and uh, they, were, they were quite a bit bigger, and they were newer at the time. So it's good to see that uh, us folks south of the border, huh? yeah, are finally getting some new ferry boats in there, too, because as we saw in the last program, and as we see on this one, too, there are lots and lots of ferry traffic uh, all throughout that the whole area up there. Marv, it was exciting. I don't I don't really know whether that's a good picture that we have there because the colors were very beautiful up there in this kind of. Not when it was overcast, little, you couldn't a see overcast it. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. that you don't get the rainy. idea of the of the really beauty of the oh, green yeah. and the blue of the water. That's true. That's true. Well, that's when a person has to go themselves and just experience it for themselves, you know. So anyway, the folks uh, taking a little stretch here just before we uh, bump there onto the shore. <laughs> we do, no, it did not bump very much though. No, no, no. It's a, you know that that's. I wonder what would happen though in the rough water. You know, if you if you did have a storm or something like that, because I imagine the ferry boats still go with the water. Well, kind they of have chopping, to go. Huh? Well, you just bump a little more. <laughs> I guess so. And there's another one just coming from where we're going to go. And there's Ben get getting a little bit of fresh air out and there. Take a deep breath, Ben. Yeah. You can see he's looking to see whether there are going to be any rain clouds up there or whether any of those seagulls are coming a little too close. I think enough. that would be a problem. <laughs> but no, he's, uh, he's well prepared. He has a, a, our jacket on and his hat. And so, he, so he's, he's seagull proof, huh? He is seagull proof, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I hope so. Anyway, we can see that uh, the uh, this settlement here, too, is, you see so many people have... Uh, clustered around the uh, around the water area there where the, where the building is. It's just really quite beautiful. Now, I, from what I hear, people in Seattle don't want anybody to come there and live. They stay away from us. Don't, you know, they're very happy with what they have and they don't want us to intrude uh, by building. I mean, well, our, I think our, that was the same huh? way too with a lot of people there in, in, uh, in Oregon. You know, well, I, the most I mean, that's why, but you know, that seems so, that just always happens. I mean, people go away to get away from the crowds, and, and pretty the soon the crowds, <laughs> crowds are going to follow. So yeah. you're going to have to keep finding another place, you know, to go, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, there the foot traffic folks are off first, and then here we're going to get off with the bus. And we're going to uh, we're going to travel down the coast. You know, there, we have a lot to see today too. In fact, we are going, as you mentioned, we're going to go to Seattle, and then we're going to go up and see if we can see spot through the clouds Mount St. Helens because it's off there uh, in the distance as well. But before we do that, Betty, we have to land here on the uh, on the mainland, and we have come to the town of. I'm not going to say it. You're not going to say it. <laughs> no. I'll okay. Listen well, to we you. have a, We have a difference <laughs> of opinion here about, about this. how we pronounce it. It's spelled M U K I L T E O. It's an Indian word, and some of our staff says Mukiltio. Mukatio. 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 And, and leave out the L. Maybe you leave out the L. <laughs> anyway, and it's a Native American term, <laughs> and it means good camping grounds. Okay, so hey, there so we are. It's an Indian word. It's that an means Indian word. Good means camp good camping grounds, right? Uh huh. 
And uh, so that's where we landed. But now we find ourselves magically, by the way of television, in Seattle. And we've gone to the Public Market Center. And of course, this place has been written up in, I don't know, how many tourist magazines and, and newspapers and whatever. And boy, people couldn't wait to get uh, there, right? It was fun. <laughs> it was fun, fun, fun. This is a real big place. And uh, I've got a picture a little bit later on here that shows the, the founding of, uh, of the place here. But anyway, here's Pike's Place, and this is where you find the fish. And you know, I thought that I had, I thought that I had a picture of uh, these guys throwing the and you don't. throwing the fish. No, no, I thought I did. Now wait, maybe that guy there he just threw in. Okay, but you I can't got, hardly see. But well, the, he's way back there. They, there's so many fish in the way. <laughs> yeah, but what happens really? You buy a fish and they weigh it. Uh, uh, you hand it to the guy and then he throws it at the clerk or the whatever the guy yeah. is in the back. And so it's just you see fish flying all over the place. So <laughs> they have flying fish in the market, not in the sea. That's right, flying, flying, flying fish. fish. You Where want the some dawn live... comes up like thunder. <laughs> live crayfish? You know, right, this guy no. looks like he, the one up there looks like he's going to crawl out Those and get away. Those don't look cray to me. They look kind of red. Oh, they do look red, don't they? Yeah. That's a joke. Okay. Cray, <laughs> you know, cray, gray. Is, is that a fish joke? <laughs> not, it's, or not, a fish, very, not a fish story, not, but a fish it's joke, fish right? A fish joke, yeah. Okay. Not anyway. very good, though. It really smelled. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, this place is really huge. I couldn't believe it. Should I mean, I it goes tell for blocks the, and blocks and should blocks. Should I tell the story here about Marge? Marge was such a nice lady, and she, Marge Frigalti from Goshen, and she goes with me a lot. And she took out her purse to buy something, and while well, there was a lady next door and said to her, would you mind handing me that little statue so I can see it? And Marge says, well, of course. So she hands her the statue to look at, and as she did this, the lady went into her purse and took out her wallet. Oh, that's so right. So this yeah. is the place yeah. you do look out for pickpockets. Yeah, you, well, you know almost any place where tourists go, I don't care if you're in the United States, outside the United States, wherever. Oh, this is the this is where you meet people at the pig. That was the pig right there. Okay. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah. No, that, that, that people say in Seattle say, well, we'll meet you at the pig, you know, and that was where the pig was. Anyway, uh, yeah, you're right. In fact, there were a couple of incidences there that happened while we were there of, of pickpockets and not and, with us, just the one. And and they really know how to yeah. they really know how to work it. They're professional. Oh well, of course, yeah. It just like the people that. Uh, go in and, uh, and do the shoplifting too. However, well, I, they probably wouldn't shoplift a fish there. I don't know. I'd be hard and to it, carry. <laughs> I think you'd get caught walking out the store. They'd smell <laughs> you. Fish. And here's the founding of the of the Pikes Market. There you can see. Uh, and this was founded really to kind of cut out the middlemen because the prices were going, back in those days, were going so high. But uh, besides the fish, there's all sorts of things. There's vegetables. There are flowers. There are knickknacks. There yeah, are there really uh, are. audio tapes. I mean, you name it, and you can find it here. It's the place is well, really it large. Stretches way, way down. Oh, for way, blocks way and blocks. Yeah. <laughs> way, way wide. Whatever. Right. But you know, it has a it has a nice place here because we, this old place where we stopped to have some tea and looking right out the windows. Now we're in the market there, but looking right out the windows, you can see part of that uh, part of the harbor area there in Seattle. Just really, really magnificent. There were some nice stores right across from it too. There mm -hmm. were some antique stores and a wonderful kitchen uh, uh, store. I bought a beautiful bowl that had been made there in Seattle for my daughter-in-law and I just loved it. It was very, very nice. And the prices are not expensive. No, you know what? I, yeah, I, I started looking for a lot of things in here too and uh, prices were very, very reasonable, you know. And they, they get a lot of uh, the homegrown folks besides the tourists that want to come in as well. There's a lot of people doing their shopping there. there here's what you're mentioning, Betty. What, one area uh, uh, across the street in this in this complex where this happens to be more restaurants upstairs here but yeah. we see a little bit of the uh, skyline of uh, Seattle yeah. too I bought a, a pastrami sandwich did you and it was, was it good? so good uh, lots and lots and lots of pastrami <laughs> mm, mm. Good. sounds good you make yeah. my mouth water I know I know <laughs> but it was good I oh did. that's wonderful I don't talk about food too much cuz you know I can take it or leave it but I did like that one well, uh, as you say, again, most anything that you w want to find here is, is here. But the fish market, again, too, I think is one of the major attractions that we see. And uh, as well as what you mentioned a little bit before, uh, flowers, T-shirts, 
Again. Oh, t-shirts. Anything. No kidding. No kidding. Have Everywhere you ever been you anywhere that they don't have t-shirts? You can go out in the villages and the jungles and you can find them selling t-shirts. You know, it's really interesting. Really interesting. Anyway, a lot of flowers here, too. That was a nice place to visit, and we spent uh, enough time here so that folks could get a, a get a little bite to eat if they wanted, or uh, like you did, you know, buy some things. Yeah. But, you know, this is the nice thing about traveling on a bus the we do have time and you can t you can get off the bus then you you just scatter you don't stay as a group at all if i'm interested in this i go down there you're interested in something else and then we have a time we will meet say at 3 30 or whatever mm -hmm. the time appointed time so a lot of people worry about going on tours marv because they think that they have to do so much you know i have to be here i have to do that you no, don't you, yeah you're right with a bus trip you you, it, you do it's your a little own more relaxed as right? long as you have the time arranged to get back on the bus mm -hmm. then you're on your own and it's fine uh, so it, people don't have to be concerned about being so stereotyped as to what they can do that's right that's right got a good view of the space needle here too uh, this have you ever been up in that one no sir you haven't no. I made a trip Why didn't up there you take me to lunch there instead of me having to buy a pastrami sandwich I think you probably got the better of the deal I think it's because you're cheap <laughs> that's true <laughs> Uh, but as, look at here. Look above the freeway. Look at all the things that are growing. You see trees, and you see these gardens that are that are hanging over there. It, you, every time I go to Seattle, I just you know, of course, and you're always going here on the freeway. Uh, this is the thing that just fascinates me: is that especially those dark tunnels. <laughs> yeah, but look there, trees growing right above the freeway. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, let's I don't know why that should be so, so phenomenal. But I, I'm just looking at my roof right now. I have little grass growing on my <laughs> on my roof. You have and to I get your mower up there and mow your get, roof. Yeah, I was thinking about getting You don't live in a sod house, do you? I don't you? live in and I have big, <laughs> thick shakes. But I think we had so much rain this year. And I'm looking up there and I'm thinking, should I get the weed eater and get up there and, <laughs> and harvest my crop? <laughs> you might want to. You might want to. And there's the dome uh, in Seattle, uh, uh, of course, we get to see. And then we're going to go on by. And we, we went by the... Uh, uh, I didn't realize, but Boeing, I guess, has got two plants up there. We went by one earlier, and of course, as you go through uh, the south end of uh, Seattle, you go by the other, the other uh, uh, Boeing. I guess without Boeing, plant. there wouldn't have been a Seattle, or they would have been a Seattle, but not to the extent. It was the well, economy know, of Boeing's coming in. In fact, the time that we were up there, when we took these pictures, there's a bunch of the older planes there that Boeing made kind of hard to see because we're bouncing around on the freeway but they went on strike and they were having all sorts of problems so. you know Wally was in, very very interested in all of this uh, the old planes particularly and he really knew the history of it because he is a buff uh, a plane buff he just really digs into it and he got some wonderful pictures that he gave me from we well, you know Betty this highway goes right through uh, Fort Lewis it's on either side and uh, Wallace was uh, he was stationed there in fact in just a moment he's going to give us a, a little uh, uh, tour uh, verbal tour as we go as we go past on the job, freeway but it was oh, hard yeah. to hear on a bus you know well he it was hard for us to pick it up with a microphone yeah. here but uh, I think most very, people heard it very knowledgeable yeah. yeah he gave us uh, being that he was stationed uh, up there for for quite some time he was very familiar of course with this area they're going back there to live oh really yes, I didn't know that yep. Is they that are. right? Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you, I, that's that's uh, an enviable position to be in because this is a they have beautiful a they area. They have land. They bought land when he lived there, when he was in the service. Well, I remember he was talking about that uh -huh. there are a lot of little lakes and, and things that are, you know, scattered all over this area and that I guess you could have a nice little house on a oh, yeah. on a little lake there. Wouldn't that be Cut lovely? Cut down your own tree to build your house and mm, make a log that cabin. That I don't know about. I think that they probably have some restrictions on that. <laughs> anyway, let's give a listen now because he's going to uh, give us a, a little thumbnail sketch here of this particular area that we're driving through. The building that's coming up on your right, the multi-story building, used to be the Fort Lewis Lodge. That's where the families, when they first checked on post stayed until they could get quarters. They built a new lodge on Main Base, and they were going to tear this one down. Uh, there was such a hue and cry in the community that they decided to leave it up. It's now the Post Museum. Actually, we had more of an explanation, but we just couldn't catch it all on videotape, unfortunately. But he did really give us a, oh, uh, a real nice yeah. explanation of this whole area, so it was really quite nice. It was educational for me. You'd never been there before? No. 
Well, <laughs> not too many women probably were at Fort Lewis. I don't know. Anyway, it's on down the road, and we're going now to Olympia, which, of course, is the capital of Washington State. And uh, we're going to try and get a shot of the state capitol building. However, we're on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> no, no, no. We got, we got a little bit of There it is, right there, sort of in the center of the picture. And you can see it, and uh, it's going to be gone just about as fast as it appeared for us. Anyway, I have stopped in this area before, and this is really quite a nice area. However, where I stopped was not at the state capitol before, but on down the road a little bit and across the street where you run into the Olympia Brewery. I was just going to ask you that. Uh -huh. Was that by any chance the brewery? No, the brewery's right over here on the other side of the street, as you see. And they have a nice tour that goes through there. Unfortunately, on this particular trip, we were unable to uh, take advantage of that because we were not there at the, at the right time. And uh, they're only open for certain hours for the, for the trip and for the tasting of uh, the Olympia uh, brewery up there, but it is nice to go through and so if uh, any of you folks are taking a drive up there this summer or any time during the year I'm sure that uh, by, huh? you'd like to drop by but also don't miss the state capital as well because that's that's worth going through as well as uh, as the brewery <laughs> If you're interested in Washington state government, I guess I don't well, know. you might combine them Well, that <laughs> maybe yeah, the, maybe the building that looked better if you think <laughs> <laughs> After you visited after the brewery, you visited the well, brewery. could mm -hmm. be I don't know I don't know. Anyway, uh, we saw a few of the trees that were changing color as we were going, but now we're running into more of an overcast day again, and uh, it's starting to get a little bit drippy, you know, I'm once thinking again. This, I'm thinking when I think about this trip to Canada, how different this is than the one we're going to do to Yellowstone. Yeah. You know, we're going to have a completely different terrain. That's, that's true. You yeah. will have. And uh, it's nice to be able to enjoy, enjoy rather, both of these yes. types of Yes, uh, it is. It'll uh, be a good area. contrast. We go in August, and that's going to be a nice time to go. Very nice time mm -hmm. to go. Anyway, on our way to, we're going to uh, climb up the mountain, and we, uh, not up Mount St. Helens, because uh, we're <laughs> going to be a little ways from there. Lots of luck. <laughs> but the drive that we took to get to that lookout area it was really quite beautiful. We went uh, over several lakes and a lot of beautiful farmland. And then we turned off on a, on a small little road, which was off of this highway, where we were actually able to see a lot of the uh, changing of the, of the colors of some of the trees. It was really very, very nice. And uh, it, was, it took us a little time to get up there, but this was an, a nice diversion, getting off of the main highway and getting uh, back into the country. Now, if you look straight ahead, that's the area where Mount St. Helens is. And I couldn't tell you if we actually saw it or not, because there was a big cloud cover uh, and it kept, kept changing. I thought, well, once we get up to the observation you know, area, uh, maybe it will be clear and maybe it won't. Uh, you just take your chances on the day that you That's go. Like you just Mount don't McKinley know for sure. Too. You don't know about it. If you get to see it, you're lucky. Uh, here again, th this was a small little road that I mentioned before that we did turn off on and there we did see a lot of the trees that were changing color. This was really beautiful, was a nice. beautiful drive. Very few cars, e too, on this particular road. I think we were probably the about only one. The only huh? one. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just remember that there was no activity. <laughs> no, it was, it was beautiful. It was Hopkins Hill. That's where we went to, and that was the Mount St. Helens viewpoint where we were. And if you look there, you can see you're 24 miles from the crater, and it erupted at 832 on May 18th, 1980. One cubic mile of material was blasted out of the mountain. 57 people were killed or missing as a result of the initial blast. And uh, I, I can I can remember all that. Remember the, all I the stuff remember that, hearing about it, yeah. of course. I mean, it made it was headline news. It's off in that direction. At least that's what the area. Oh, said. there yeah. it is. Well, Look, I don't Mark. know if that's where it is. I'm not going to say that that's it for sure. That's right. I don't you don't. Know. I'll say. Oh, there it is. I think it's between those cloud layers up there. I uh, think. Well, I we know, know it's there. It's up there somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It didn't disappear. No. And they didn't have another eruption since we were there, no. I don't believe. So no. the only interruption <laughs> is when I try to t get in when you're talking. That's, <laughs> that's okay. okay. Uh, the weather changes, you know, that's what they say. Wait five minutes and it'll change again. And anyway, we're going on now to Tillamook. Oh, and yeah. we're going to see some cheese. Mm. My mm. favorite. I love that cheddar cheese. Do and you? I don't allow myself to eat it too much because of the fat content, but I sure do like it. Well, Betty, if you like it, you're going to find out how the cheese now is really made as we drive up to Tillamook. I'd just like to welcome you to Tillamook Cheese, uh, tell you a little bit about us. Uh, Tillamook uh, County Creamery Association, which is the manufacturer of Tillamook Cheese, 
Uh, we've been in business here since 1909. We are a co-op, which means that uh, we are owned by the dairy farmers in Tillamook County. And to be a member of the co-op, uh, you have to have um, own a dairy farm and that's uh, operating and producing milk to be shipped to the co-op. Um, the membership, when it was originally organized in 1909, was $25. It still is $25 today. Oh. Uh, the kicker is you have to own the farm, <laughs> and those aren't $25. Uh, but but it is it's uh, it's actually started out uh, back in those days there were lots of small cheese factories throughout the county um, each one each little community had a cheese factory a store and a school and that was sort of the hub of the community and the association was far formed actually as a marketing co-op for all of those small cheese factories and as transportation became better and things changed over the years. They started joining together. And in 1968, the last of those small cheese factories were closed and uh, they did some remodeling here and everything was done here. This plant actually was originally built in 1949, has been added onto and expanded many, many times since then. We will produce 47 million pounds of cheese this year which is quite a bit of cheese, lots of cheese sandwiches anyway. Uh, we also, in addition to making cheddar cheese, uh, we produce Monterey Jack cheese, which is a white um, cheese that uh, is made from pasteurized milk, where our cheddar cheese actually is uh, a raw milk product, considered a raw milk product, uh, therefore must be aged a minimum of 60 days before it can be marketed and we actually choose to age ours for 90 days that um, aging process actually uh, works much the same as a pasteurization pro process so in, if in fact there were any uh, bugs in there that weren't good for you they would nat die a natural death I guess uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're actually only one of two um, processors in the country that still make raw milk cheese. Um, but we can do that because we have a very, very high quality milk here in this area. Our milk is um, some of the, uh, if not the highest quality milk in the country. Our farmers um, are all grade A licensed and, and even though our primary goal is to make cheese with that milk. We do require them to be grade A licensed, so there it is very high quality product. In addition to that, uh, one of the byproducts of cheese is whey. Uh, it takes 10 pounds of milk, which is equivalent to actually about five quarts, to produce one pound of cheese because actually the cheese is the solid portion of the milk. They coagulate that together and that's what makes the curd which becomes the cheese. And you end up with nine pounds of liquid left over, which is mostly water, but there is uh, a, about a third of a pound of, of solids in this nine pounds. And so we have a drying plant. Uh, actually, it's that large building way up in the back that you see with the plume coming out of it right now. Well, Betty, did you find out a little bit more about how they do cheese at Tillamook? I did find out how they do cheese at Tillamook, and I tell you, it's it's just a really fascinating thing. It is and, a but fascinating thing. I yeah. imagine that many quarts of milk was that to make one pound of cheese. Yeah. Was it? I forget what it said. A bunch, it's anyway. A bunch. Hey, it's about time for us okay. to go. If you're interested in our upcoming trips, give Betty a call. We will see you later. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.